few hours into your gaming session, you reach over, you grab your lukewarm glass of milk. Good morning, BBs. Oh, good morning. It's too early. It sure is. Welcome to the first best and only morning show in existence. I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan. We're already <laughs> done. I know. I already look disappointed. <laughs> I, know. We, I know. We've talked about this. We've talked about how I'm not supposed to start the show disappointed. Yeah. But you know what? You can't sigh at the beginning of every show I or just sigh. say the word disappointed. I didn't sigh. Yeah. I just, I did it with my eyes. What's you wrong? You know how you're supposed to be smizing? We've got a bunch of good news today. Uh, smizing and sizing. Yeah, you know you're always I, sighing with your I'm eyes. I'm always sighing with my eyes. What is disappointing? We have tons of good news today. There's, it's nothing disappointing. Nothing disappointing. Everything's fine. Well, everything's great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, CinemaCon. I hit someone with my car on the way to work. I don't know if they're okay. I thought it was- check? I Well, because I thought, at first I thought it was a plastic bag. And then I could tell that it was definitely a human being. In what way did they resemble a plastic bag? The way they were just- flying up into the air after I hit them. Reminded me of a plastic bag. After you hit them. But what about before? If you ask me about before, I would tell you, can't recall, legally. Okay. Well, legally. Uh, it's only 9 a.m. Uh, and that's a strong start. A lot of people are making a good Katy Perry joke That there. is a good Katy Perry joke. <laughs> That is a really solid Katy Perry joke. That is a good chat. Katy Perry joke. All right? Uh, yeah, maybe you just got a little bit of vengeance on the truck driver. Except the rule <laughs> is, if you've been hit by a car, which Anthony has, mm -hmm. you get to do one in exchange. You, you get can, one for one. Yeah, it's, it's we run on eye for an eye. Yeah. Here in this, uh, Ringa12 says, that was you. Ringa, I'm so sorry. We should, ex we should exchange information. <laughs> yeah, really. You should have done so at the time. Well, at yeah. the time, I was too busy panicking and running. Sure, yeah. And which uh, you can understand, which I think we can all understand. We can all understand I think we can all running. understand that if you I'm hit maybe somebody- Maybe in that situation. Okay, let's stop. <laughs> let's stop. Let's stop that bit. Let's remember what we're doing today. Uh, I'm the casually cause bound in Kim Possible, which I didn't realize until I looked over at the camera in my green cargo pants. But uh, CinemaCon- CinemaCon. Has brought so many announcements- of so many reboots and continuations. Yeah, was anything like fully wholly new announced? I don't. I if there was, I didn't see it. I'll tell uh, yeah, you that I much. Did. I didn't make my feed if it did. I'll tell but you. But we'll what. get to all of that in a little bit. Today's episode is sponsored by Factor. Uh, you may have been here for the last Factor one that we did when we ordered our box. Uh, now we've received it. So at some point too, towards the middle of the show, Anthony and I are going to try one of the meals. I figured uh, I brought something that I figured was really appropriate for Great. a good 9 a.m. meal because I forgot to order any breakfast foods. Uh, so we're going to dip into a little bit of mama's beef lasagna bowl oh, at we're 9 garfing, in the morning. Boys. So we're going to get into that in a little bit. But we are garfing. You can click the link that is popping up in chat and use our code to get 50% off your first box and free wellness shots for life. I was very brave and I did a wellness shot the other day. How exciting. How was it? I am healed. Whoa. From everything. But all of that we will get into a little bit later because there's news to talk about. Oh. There's things to talk about. So much news, so many things. I mean, let's get right into CinemaCon. Let's do it, okay. Um, CinemaCon <sighs> is, in case you don't know, uh, it's the big convention where everybody goes. It's mostly for uh, movie theater owners and distributors and buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically it's like, it's, it's Comic-Con, but for executives for movies. And big companies still go to it. Yes. That's true. That is a big difference between this and Comic-Con. Because it's not about the fans, it's about business. Yeah. And they're gonna show up when it's about business. So um, a lot of the things uh, that happened at CinemaCon could only be seen at CinemaCon. So we don't have a lot of like trailers to show for you. We basically have leaks from CinemaCon or announcements that were allowed to be yes. announced, but not seen. Yes. They yeah. figured that all of these characters should be seen, not heard. That's right. CinemaCon believes in that for movies. Oh, but before we get too into CinemaCon, Good morning, Alex. Good morning. Hello, how's it going? Hi. Alex, what, what's your feeling on cinema? Just talk about film in general. I yeah. think film is a beautiful art form and it should be appreciated only by gay people. Fair. Strong stance. Fair. I love it. Yep. 
Yeah, I love that. Um, Alex 2024. Well, CinemaCon announced, this is where they announced like, obviously big movies that are coming. Yeah. Uh, but also like big, they, they'll they announce products and tie-ins. Yeah. Uh, movie theater chains also show up to CinemaCon. Yeah. And so if you were looking to see the, uh, the, the Dune bucket beforehand, <laughs> yeah. that was probably at CinemaCon. Probably at CinemaCon last year. I yeah. don't know. Um, Disney had a huge presence at CinemaCon. Sure. Tons of stuff. Very exciting. That's what happens when you own like 30% of all media. Yeah. Very exciting. Let's pretend that that isn't concerning and instead enjoy these little movies we like. So uh, probably one of the biggest was Deadpool and Wolf Deadpool and Wolverine. I can say it. I've I heard got of it. them. Yeah. Uh, nine minutes of footage. Nine minutes of footage. So what did we get as the public? A leak of a soda cup. Yep. We got a picture of a soda cup. We're probably not going to show it because it is a leak. Uh, but it's a what? I mean, we can if we want to. It's a cup. It's a cup. But it's, it's a cup. But it's the first reveal of this character looking this way. And I don't know. I don't know. Spoilers, if, in case you're worried about spoilers. It, it is just, it's the first photo of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in the mask in the full classic suit. Yeah, I'm I'm down to show it. If you don't want to see yeah. Hugh Jackman in the the classic Wolverine suit, which we all knew that we were going to get, um, <laughs> then Brent Nix in the live studio audience saying a leak. That's a terrible cup. <laughs> uh, let's show this cup leak. Let's show it. Uh, click on the photo to make it see the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Let's see it. Uh, there's a few photos there. Um, they show different ones from like yeah. things that are They've coming They've got the up. 25th anniversary um, episode one cup as well, yeah. the popcorn bucket and everything. But you know, they got a Deadpool cup. They got a Wolverine cup. It's a cup. But it's the first time that we've actually ever seen Hugh Jackman in the full classic Wolverine suit and mask. Do we, now looking at that. Yeah, do we think that's Hugh do Jackman? Do we think that's an actual photo of Hugh Jackman in the suit or do we think that's a CG guy that they use for CG? It might be a, C it looks kind of like it a CG guy. It does look kind of CG guy, but we assume he gets in the suit. No, he will get in that. So but then they might as well take a photo of him in the suit. If it's not literally a photo of him in the suit, it is like a very doctored version that has essentially become Yeah, it. I mean, that's the thing is they, now that the, now that they do the full scans for everybody yeah. for every movie, they don't Can need to pose. Can you just show my screen where I'm zoomed in on it? Uh, they don't need to pose everybody in every position for every promo thing that they do. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, I feel like that's a CG boy, but it's basically Hugh Jackman. Yeah. Um, there he is. That's a Wolverine. I don't know. Here's I think it's, well, I think we get to see a little bit of updates to the suit, which is really cool. So yeah. it's the classic suit, but it is built and armored much more like a modern Marvel suit in the cinematic universe. Yeah. It is upgraded to look a little more functional and realistic and mm -hmm. a little less spandex. The gloves, the gloves and the, and the shoulders mm -hmm. and the, uh, and the, the, the etching around the muscles is very Mayas Rubio, the uh, the costume designer who like yeah. kind of created that whole thing for Marvel. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's very cool. Um, I don't know. I I actually am more excited about this movie now mm -hmm. that X Men ninety seven has happened. Have you been watching it? Yeah. So I have not watched any of X-Men 97 oh. yet, but I did see photos of everybody crying this week and I am terrified. This week's a lot. I'm catching up on Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol's so good. I'm so glad we're putting CinemaCon aside for just yeah. a moment. I'm so glad I bugged her long enough yeah. that she started watching Doom Patrol. Well, and the, the Ghost Boys Detectives yeah. were about to come out. So it just felt like a good time. I yes. just finished season one. Yes, we got, we pushed through your pathological demand avoidance. Yeah. And we got through season one, all the yeah. way to season one. Yeah. You got to love that show. It's, I love the show. You got to love I that love show. I love the show. Now, all that negative man stuff, all the stuff with Larry, uh huh. all the negative man, Matt Bomer stuff, mm -hmm. completely new for the series. His Sweet. backstory like that, they huh. that was like, Matt Bomer was like, I'll come on and I'll do Doom Patrol. Can we make it gayer? Hell yeah. And everybody on Doom Patrol was like, oh, thank God, Matt. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. We're going to make this show extremely gay. I was shocked how queer Doom Patrol was. I'm so excited about it. It's wildly good. Brendan I started Fr researching the history of Danny the Street. Danny the Street, dude. Now, Danny the Street has historically had queer influence and hosted a lot of drag. But new for the show was Danny the Street being a non-binary icon. That's right. That's right. Because how are you going to have... How are you going to have uh, he, he, her pronouns when you're a street? Yes. You know what I mean? Like when you can turn into anything, we've sure. talked about this. 
when you can be anything, yeah. why would you choose to be a, to be locked into anything? Yeah. Why would you be locked into love anything Danny. if you didn't need to? We love Danny. Danny the Street is amazing. Season two and season three, they get into the Gerard Way Doom Patrol stuff. Because I don't know if you knew this, but Gerard Way took over Doom Patrol. You think there's something I didn't know about Gerard Way? You insult me. Well- You spit in my face, Anthony. Well, here's the thing. I know that you know Gerard Way. I don't know how much you know you knew about Doom Patrol and like his comic stuff because his how comic stuff came and went real quick. How dare you? Okay. Gerard Way. I'm shocked. If, I know, but that's why I'm shocked that you didn't get into Doom Patrol earlier. I was busy with the Umbrella Academy. That's fair. That's fair. Dude- the Doom Patrol, everything that, that Gerard Way did a few mm -hmm. years ago, DC Comics gave Gerard Way an entire line of comics, an entire imprint under DC called Young Animal. And it's so fucking good. Mm -hmm. um, Doom Patrol, his run of Doom Patrol is amazing. Yeah. Uh, they did um, a Shade the Changing Man. They rebooted mm -hmm. it as Shade the Changing Girl. And Shade the Changing Girl is unbelievable. Great. Um, there's a there's a comic called Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye. That's hell yeah. wild as hell. That's it's the, great. It's the weirdest stuff. Very cool. Uh, Doom Patrol is so cool. I'm so glad it's you're great. in Doom Patrol. I'm loving it. Um, All right, CinemaCon though. CinemaCon. So, uh, nine minutes. People are, you know, not giving a lot of information about. We will obviously not be providing any spoilers from that nine minutes. We'll all get it at some point. Uh, we got a little more insight into kind of where, like, Wade Wilson is at, no longer mm -hmm. a superhero. Sure. A used car salesman kind of doing his thing, which we've seen from teasers already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they say it's basically all of the reviews are like, it's so Deadpool. Yeah, great. Um, and great. I think that's, and I think that's the main thing people were worried about is, is will Disney and Marvel try to make Deadpool a little mm -hmm. more family friendly? And the answer is like, nope. no. Nope, sure Listen, didn't. Disney owns a lot of different imprints. Yep. And they're fine. Uh, Deadpool will be coming to theaters in July of this year, July 26th. The next thing we got was Captain America Brave New World first footage at CinemaCon. Uh, in it, it's we have Harrison Ford asked Anthony Mackie to rebuild the Avengers. The characters. This is a quote. This, this is, is so cute. Yeah. I love that as a title. It's I it's such a it's such a weird title because yeah it implies that Harrison Ford is like an Avengers fan. Yeah. And was like, Anthony Mackie, will you just make sure that the next Avengers movie happens? No, I just want to see him together on screen and yeah. I hope that they- kiss. Yeah, when in reality, uh, it's he's taking over as Thunderbolt Ross, right? Yeah. So Harrison Ford is the new Thunderbolt Ross. And- um, Which- Which is great. Unbelievable. Which is unbelievable. I can't believe this dude's taking new roles. Dude, we- Okay. Can we just say we- um, Humble brag, uh -huh. we went to the premiere of Dial of Destiny. Amazing. Harrison Ford was there. Yeah. He lifted a child over his head. Yeah. Just to do it. Yeah. He just, there was a child in front of him and he simply lifted the child up off the ground and yeah. hold him, held him over his head and was Put just him up like, on his shoulder. Yeah. It was just like, whoa, okay, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford's doing great. He's fine. He is doing fine. Then, I love it. He I, that, <laughs> then he threw that kid out a window. No. And he said, no ticket. <laughs> We've already done that bit. I'm gonna do it every time. <laughs> All right. Did we really do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you said the same thing. As soon as you said he picks up the child, I was like, Anthony's gonna say, and he threw the child again. And he did. He did. All right, I fell right into our trap, Anthony. Don't don't lift up a kid. All right. Continuing CinemaCon. Continuing Goodness CinemaCon. Gracious. Uh continuing just Disney at CinemaCon, truly. Um which is very funny because I didn't even think of Planet of the Apes as a Disney property. Yeah, it is now. That makes sense. It's all Disney Everything now. is. Uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, 13 minutes. Every time I go to the theater, I feel like I get 13 minutes of Kingdom Son of the, of the Planet of the Apes. Son of the rise of the Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Three. How many of these have there been? There've been a so million. many. I think I saw the first one with James Franco. I don't think I've seen any of them. I don't care. I'm so sorry. I don't care about Planet of the Apes. I have seen the trailer and every iteration of it because I go to the movies a lot and I've mm -hmm. seen them a hundred times and I still don't care. I still don't want it. I'm yeah, so sorry. I hope those apes are taking good care of their planet and and that they get back to their planet or something. Or whatever. Yeah, whatever they're looking to do, I hope they do it. This will be in theaters on May 8th if you are into the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, if you enjoy apes and planets. There are nine of them. There's nine of them. No. Skywalker said four in this current run. Yeah, I was going to say. But nine total. Wow. That's still a lot of fucking planets of apes. 
There's so many planets of apes. I don't, I, I think that's more than we needed. Six movies, three prequels. Wow. And they're all about the apes? Yes. Huh. Now- it's, That's a bit much in my opinion. Yeah, now the old ones got like really wild because they get, we got to a point like in, with the 60s and 70s ones where mm -hmm. like Japan was just making them on their own. Yeah. And then like we were dubbing them. Like we got to the point where there were like a million of these movies and it was like super scientist apes living in the future and- No thanks. I don't know, man. I've not seen any of them and I don't plan to start on this one, but if you're into that sort of thing, like I said, they showed 13 minutes of it. But really, I do feel like trailers at movies right now are 13 minutes of Planet of the Apes. Do you remember they did the one with Mark Wahlberg? No. I try like, to forget everything Mark Wahlberg's it was like, ever done. It was like pre-James Franco. It was like, I think it was a Tim Burton. I don't know, but it was, Tim yeah. Burton did a Planet of the Apes? Yeah. That and sounds I, vaguely familiar. And Tim Roth was the bad ape. Hmm. Yeah. And at the end, when Mark Wahlberg thinks that he's gotten home, mm -hmm. instead of seeing the Statue of Liberty on the, and there's like, oh no, it, they turn you damn dirty apes. You don't remember the, the original ending to the original Planet of the Apes with Charlton Heston. Do you I know what the ending is? I seen it. So the whole deal is like, he's an astronaut and he lands on this planet and it's apes. And he's like, I got to get home. Okay. But at the end, he sees the Statue of Liberty on the, on, on the beach and he goes, oh no, we did it. This is, this is earth. We blew it up. We destroyed it. When? Well, he went into space and he came back and time had passed is the whole deal. So in the new one with Mark Wahlberg, what they did is he actually flies home to earth, but something wild has happened. And when he goes to the the Lincoln Memorial. Okay, they got a memorial, memorial in each one. Yeah, the Lincoln Memorial has the face of a monkey. Yeah, somebody in chat just said Ape Lincoln. Ape Lincoln. They did Ape Lincoln. They did a pun as the end of the film. Did they shoot Mark Wahlberg into space? Twice. Just stayed. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. We got an uh, actual trailer that did come out for a new Daisy Ridley movie, uh, which is called yeah. Young Woman and the Sea. Yes, this is, Daisy Ridley Let's has been posting a, bit bit. a lot about this over the last couple of years. Uh, this is the story of an Olympic swimmer. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, she's very, very proud of this one. That's cool. She doesn't post a lot on social media, particularly no. when she's in the in the middle of production of something. Yeah. But she posted a lot of photos from the production of this one. I think she really likes it. I mean, here's the thing. As like a performer, I'm sure playing an Olympic swimmer is incredibly fucking challenging. Like I bet she was in training for a long time. I bet that she had to learn so many things for it that it's Don't like, Don't show yeah. too much of that, Alex. We'll get yeah, thrown into true. the prisons. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go to jail. Yeah, playing an Olympic athlete, I'm sure is like in intense. So I bet after you'd be like, you guys, I literally trained like an Olympic athlete for yeah. this. Please watch it. I thought now, I thought for some reason that one was coming straight to Disney Plus. I don't know why. Uh, I thought I had read something about that, but I'm glad that it's getting a theatrical. Yeah. Uh, it is set to be released in theaters May 31st. Wow. That's very soon. It's coming up. Wow. Uh, okay. We got the new Alien movie, Romulus. Yeah. Which again, we're going to show like a dainty bit of, we're just going to skip around a little bit. Now this is done by uh, Fede, um, the director of the new the the Evil Dead reboot. Yeah, and Don't Breathe is doing the new uh, is doing the new Alien, which I'm so excited. All for. right, that's it. I'm so <laughs> excited for because yeah. like, listen, all of the all of the Ridley Scott like Prometheus mm -hmm. like all that stuff, very cool. Do your thing. Sure. Very cool. Very weird. Very conceptual. I just get back to aliens, man. <laughs> Love a classic alien. Get back to a classic aliens. Here for it. Uh, there was footage from Inside Out 2, which I am actually so fucking excited for. I love Inside Out. I love that movie so much. Yes. I'm so excited for the new one. So uh, yeah, it's it's a good movie. It's I'm, the kind of movie where I'm like, yes, this deserved another one. And it's not like, a oh, it was successful. So of course you had to do another. Like, I love it. I'm very excited. Um, I also didn't know that this was a thing, a prequel to The Lion King. Yeah, Mufasa. They're doing a prequel to The Lion King. It's going to be CG. Did you all know this was happening? Yeah. People didn't like the, the CG Lion King movie, the like live action. Is it going to be like that? It did. The one with- Out of all the live Beyonce action- in it? Yeah. So like out of all the live action ones, which are- heavily CG, right? Yeah. Like that, the Lion King was just a CG film. Yeah. Uh, but Lion King, Jungle Book, all of those, the Lion King is the one that did the best. Really? And was received the best. Really? Yeah. I didn't see it. Um, so Mufasa's happening. All right, that's cool. 
<laughs> uh, a teaser trailer for Moana 2, which has not been released publicly, but I want to see it so bad. Yep. I am so curious about so many things. There's been a lot of like things that people felt like were going wrong in it, like little leaks that were happening that were worrying people about Moana 2. So I'm very curious to see where that goes. But I'm also, Moana's maybe my favorite Disney movie. Yeah. Big fan here. So uh, that's all of the Disney stuff that was there. Um, is there a thing that you are most excited a, for? There was a lot of other stuff there. I mean, uh, apparently uh, James Gunn showed off some some footage from uh, from the new Superman, which of course, you know, I'm very excited about. Yeah. Uh, and also showed off the, the new logo for Superman. Mm -hmm. uh, which is basically it's the kingdom come logo. It's Superman's like it's Superman's kingdom come. Uh, it's, it's based on the, uh, the golden age, like Fleischer Superman thing. Yeah. So, uh, it's cool, but it's instead of using the kingdom come, I'll show you instead of using the kingdom come colors, it's using the uh, standard Superman colors. Okay. It's, it's cool. I don't, I don't know Superman stuff enough to like make any of that that you just said makes yeah, sense. You so know what I mean? I'll, I'll show it. It's basically like, huh? This is what people were saying it was going to look like, and it does. Okay. This is this is it. It's basically the Kingdom Come slash Mike's Max Fleischer animated logo. Okay, so it's just very like minimalistic logo. Yeah. All right. Fine. It's cool. All right. Nothing else matters. There was Avatar news, as in the Last Airbender. Yes. So right now, they're calling the new animated movie, which we knew was coming, which is following the events of the Avatar: The Last Airbender series. Mm -hmm. They're currently calling it Ang: The Last Airbender. Okay. Interesting. All right. I'm not mad at it, but I'm not impressed either. No. I'm kind of like, oh, okay. Good. There's been a lot of footage going around of the voice actors who have been uh, a part of these series throughout the years uh, talking about it recently. Uh, a lot of people being like, hey, stuff's coming back. Would you like to return for it? Uh, and we have a resounding no from the majority of people that have been voice actors for it because they're all white people that have finally yeah. learned. Uh, and again, it's one of those things where it's like, we know that it was a Hollywood standard specifically. Uh, sure. we, we know that like, it was very normalized for voice actors in animated stuff to take on roles that were not uh, like appropriate casting. Yeah. Uh, and it is no longer normalized and that's great progress. So all of the actors uh, in these interviews are going, no, I would not return to it because it is not appropriate for me as a white person to play that. I'm yeah. so glad that I got to, I love that character. Sure. I look forward to what they do with it next. Great. Um, Wonderful. Do, other than that, like, mm -hmm. do we know do we know when this movie is set? Do we know what kind of story it's going to be telling? Oh, I got you. anything about that? So uh, what we're supposed to, I believe, have from right now that we've known for a while is that it follows the events immediately after the end of the series. So after the Fire Lord has fallen uh, and in between the events of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legends of Korra, because Legend of Korra picks up pretty much so right after Aang how, dies. This shows how Aang becomes a terrible father. Yeah, probably. Is this show, yeah. this is show Aang as deadbeat dad? Zuko taking over as the Fire Lord, yeah. uh, building Republic City, all those kinds of things. Uh, Dante Bosco is actually the only voice actor returning from the original cast, which makes which, perfect sense. Yes. It is so wonderful. And also, thank God. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> thank look, God we're not losing Dante a, Bosco. A total, a total wipe and reset. Like, here's the thing. A lot of those characters yeah. were young enough mm -hmm. where you can say, well, Aang's got to have a different voice because he's yeah. grown up and it's okay yeah. if, the, if the original kid doesn't come back. We'll right. get somebody who sounds. But Zuko was old enough yeah. to where Zuko's voice should be consistent. And yeah. Dante was such a strong presence in that show and is so good. Yeah. Like Dante is just so good. Everybody in that show is great. But I'm so excited. Uh, we got a ton of casting news. I actually, hold on. I didn't put one in here that I mean to. Um, because I, there was yeah. some exciting news for the casting of Toph specifically. Oh yeah, I was going to say. Uh, here we go. There was casting announcements for like everybody, yeah. but I wanted to highlight specifically I saw that Dave Toph, Batista's in it. Uh, Dave Batista's, but Toph is being played by a blind voice actor. Whoa. And I just think that that's really special. And there's going to be discourse around this. Like, well, why does it matter? It's voice acting. Uh, it matters because there are less opportunities for people with various disabilities. Yes. It matters because representation is important. Yes. That character was so important to so many people with impaired vision that like connected with Toph and to see somebody that also represents them in real life get to represent Toph. Yeah. I just, I have, I have literal chills. No, um, it's, it's, listen, it's, it's a super important thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, and you know, when the people are saying it doesn't have to be, but it could be, and yeah. it very rarely is. Yeah. So it's nice that it is. And there are things that they will be able to 
mention and bring about that character because all production is collaborative. Yeah. Uh, particularly when they're recording for animation, mm -hmm. that's one of the first steps. Yeah. And there are things that uh, every actor will bring up, will be like, hey, if my character does this, mm -hmm. um, I just sort of feel like my character might make a decision more like this. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we're always saying like, yes, acting is acting, but mm -hmm. if there are cultural things, physical things that uh, that are specific to a character, mm -hmm. sometimes those things can only be known yes. by the people and there are things that they will recognize and they will see in the story. They'll be like, well, I can tell you that as somebody who is blind, this would be the way that I would respond to this. In addition to that, it's also one of those things where in Hollywood, opportunities can commonly be limited for all marginalized people. Mm -hmm. So when we give the roles of marginalized characters to other non-marginalized people, we just continually close the door on those folks. Yes. Uh, it It is a a long running choice to exclude people. And then we literally are like, well, we're going to represent you in film, but not with you. Yeah. But not like, you're not going to be part of it, but like, oh, look, you're on screen. Yeah. You know? all, these, all of these things, like, like all of this stuff is very, very good. Yeah. It's all very, very good and tough rules. So it's yeah. double good. Uh, I think that so far, all of this is coming together. That looks like it's going to be really great. Lauren Montgomery, who worked as a storyboard artist on season three of Avatar is, um, and on all of the episodes of Legend of Korra is set to direct. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Fucking tight. Oh, uh, very we exciting. Love a boards, we love a boards driven animated production. Yeah, we, we really do. do. Uh, so this is, this was at CinemaCon. So this is theatrical. Yes, it's a movie. This is a theatrical animated film. Yes. This is coming to theaters, uh, which is why people were like, why aren't they saying Avatar? Uh, and it's because James Cameron will come for you. Uh, that's why, that's why the original theatrical film was called The Last Airbender. Really? Yeah. Cause Avatar came out first. Blue Cat came out first. Huh. Uh, I don't know if, I mean, look, it's also possible that Aang the Last Airbender isn't the final title, but yeah. I don't know. I think it is. I, it's fine. It's like literally fine. You know what I mean? Like it's not amazing, but it is fine. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so joining the voice cast is... Uh, Dave Bautista is playing some sort of villain. We cool. have Diane Kwan, Jessica Matten, uh, Ramon Zaragoza. And I believe there was one other person. They kept under wraps. Um, there was somebody who uh, leaked that they were playing Katara, but they didn't announce it at this con. Whoa. They accidentally put it on their website and deleted it. Whoa. So very interesting. Um, but yeah, limited casting announcements right now and primarily casting announcements for non-main characters. Um, but I'm very, very... I don't know. I feel very excited about it. Yeah, it's going to be great. Okay, here we go. Eric Nam is who will be voicing Aang. Great. Um, I am not familiar with Eric Nam's uh, body of work. Um, Me neither. Yeah, I don't but, know. But uh, very exciting. I think that it is uh, a... I think it is a big deal that this series can come back mm -hmm. and... Um, update. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm interested in seeing the way all of this meshes now yeah. that the rights are spread between a couple different companies and studios Yeah, and seeing how all the stories kind of, kind of link together. Okay. Is Eric Nam actually a K-pop idol? Because I, I was going to say, yeah, he looks familiar. Okay. Hold on. K-pop idol. Love Cause that. like looks like a K-pop idol. Oh, he does. Uh, yeah, I saw the photo. photos and I was like, it's for sure giving like beautiful, majestic K-pop photos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sing singer, songwriter, television personality in South Korea. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah. Great. Very excited. Has I'm a not huge podcast apparently. All right. Cool. Well, thank you all for letting us know. That's freaking tight. Uh, that's awesome. I'm excited to see how that is. I'm curious mm -hmm. if you are more familiar with uh, his voice, uh, what you think. For Aang. Obviously, a lot of people are going to change their voices in that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Aang's going to be a little bit older. Do you think it's a good fit? Let me know. Uh, other big movie news coming out of things this week. Uh, the Last Ronin, <laughs> when you want to talk about more reboots and more uh, adaptations. So The Last Ronin, one of uh, one of my favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stories. We know mm -hmm. it's getting a game, a big, a big yeah. budget game. Uh, we know it's a lot of people's favorites. Uh, it's getting a live action movie and it's going to be rated R I'm is what so, they're saying. I'm so 
interested. When this first got announced, I was like, wait, we knew the last run was coming. And I was like, no, we knew that the game was coming, not the movie. Yeah. Uh, so I was very surprised by this, but I'm pretty excited about it. It is, yes, intended to be an R rating. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no, live studio audience. No, no, you're thinking of the, you're thinking of the last samurai. That's the Tom Cruise movie where Tom Cruise goes to Japan and is like, I can samurai better than the samurai. No, we mean the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Uh, this is a TMNT story that is set in the future all mm -hmm. of the turtles except for one have yeah. been as well as uh, splinter yeah. have been have been killed by the foot clan and there is one turtle who we don't really know which one of the four it is mm -hmm. uh until the end yeah. but uh one turtle is is the last standing and is going to get revenge and destroy the foot clan and fights with all four of the weapons of the turtles and very cool uh the, there's a big reveal of who that turtle is yeah uh and it's such a, man, it's such a good story. Uh, Tyler Burton Smith is working on the story right now for the script, who uh, worked on Boy Kills World and Child's Play. Those are okay. what they're known for. Yep. Uh, I haven't seen Boy Kills World. Boy Kills World, I've heard good things about. The okay. new Child's Play did not, didn't really click for me, mm -hmm. but I think that's mostly, I think that has less to do with the writing and the people involved and more to do with the splitting of the rights between Child's Play and Chucky. Mm. Interesting. Which has been like a big thing. Like one person, yeah, yeah one person owns the rights to child's play and oh. then the other person owns the rights uh, to the character Chucky. Oh, we got a Harvest Moon Story of Seasons kind of situation here. We absolutely do. Very interesting. So uh, the Chucky TV series mm -hmm. is great because yeah. it's allowed to build off of Chucky. Child's play is the one, I don't know if you remember, it came out with um, Aud Aubrey, uh, Aubrey Plaza. Yeah, yeah, well- Aud and she was like the mom in it. I thought she was in the Chucky series. She might be in the Chucky series as well, but she was in the Child's Play movie. Fascinating. Maybe I'm wrong. I um, think I am wrong about that. Um, that's fine. I think this is so interesting. Um, I saw uh, Goose Beasy in the chat said, so they might do the same turtle as in the comics. They might not. I would think they would. I would hope I they do the same. I think it would be a big upset if they didn't. I understand wanting to change it up and be to surprise people, but also Unlikely. the reveal of it is, the reveal of it is important. And, yeah. and who it is is important. You would have to tell the story differently, I think. Yeah, um, we don't know, but curious. Yeah. Uh, Another thing that's happening. Hey, do you do you have nostalgia for your childhood, motherfucker? Buckle up, because it's Transformers G.I. Joe time. It's your childhood meets your childhood in the reboot of your childhood. Man, so we knew that this was coming. This is the Hasbro universe. Uh, it's happened in the comics a bunch already, yeah. uh, but it hasn't happened in film. And um, I, the G.I. Joe movies were... <laughs> so first of all, as a kid, I was not a G.I. Joe guy Uh huh. Uh, because uh, Army. Yeah. Even as a kid, I was like, Army? Not surprised. Yeah. I was just like, Army? No, swords. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Swords. Magic. Yeah. Right. Lasers. Yeah. Not, Army? Not guns. Gun? No. Tank? Nah. Eh. Um, so this is the thing. Uh. Transformers did way, way, way better at the at the theater in the theaters. It's had ninety million yeah. films. Yeah. Uh, how did the Beast Wars Even one more do? More than the Planet of the Apes. Alex, how'd that last Beast Wars movie do? <laughs> if you can find that. Yeah. I'm fascinated that people keep going to see Transformers films. Yeah. The, the last one people really liked was Bumblebee. Bumblebee was great. People loved it. I still haven't seen it. Bumblebee is great. It's a horse girl movie. I do think it's very funny because it is just that, like, if you played with these types of toys as a kid, like, they were often a types of toys that you would put together. Yeah. Uh, like, I think of it as, like, well, yeah, my brother had G.I. Joes, and those were just, like, I didn't have Ken dolls yes. as a kid, so I would just take my brother's G.I. Joes. Yes. And uh, that's just this. You're just, you're just. My sister and I created a utopian community where horse and car lived together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She had my little ponies and mm -hmm. I had matchbox cars and they all talked and they built a society together. And that makes perfect sense to me. Um, that's the MLP cars crossover. Decently. It's got a 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. It made, you know, $400 million. Okay. As a Transformers movie. Okay. You know? All right. It all performed. right. Yeah, four hundred million. Four hundred million's not nothing. Yeah, I think they, uh, I think they dropped most of the big name cast to save money. Yeah, so they probably made some money on that. Anyway, uh, the the GI Joe movies did not do super great. I mm -hmm. thought the second one was great. You know, the second one was directed by the guy who did the Mummy. Hmm. Stephen Sommers did it. Huh. 
Huh. It's fun. Okay. Uh, however. I haven't seen one in a long time. It's been a hot minute since I've seen a Transformers movie. Oh no, G.I. Joe Oh, sorry, movie. the G.I. Joe movies. I haven't seen any of the G.I. Joe movies and it's been a hot minute since I've seen a Transformers. I haven't seen a Transformers since the first couple. Okay. Uh, yeah, the last one I saw was where they revealed that Transformers were the Illuminati and behind every great person in history, there was a Transformer who brought Hell them yeah. to power. I think that's awesome. Uh, it's a fun idea. Uh, this, uh, I don't know. They're bad films. Uh, but I think it's fun to see G.I. Joe Transformers together. Yeah. And I think it's like a soft reboot to this film series. Yeah. It's a fun idea. Now, where do... Fast and Furious fit into all of this. I'm just saying. They do not. Put them with Jurassic Park and the Transformers, you dumb babies. Transformers and Fast and the Furious would be an unbelievable crossover. How have they not? Vin Diesel has been screaming about it from the rooftops. Are, are the rights writing? I don't know if the rights are writing, but- I don't know if the rights are writing. Here's the thing. I think you've got, I think you've got uh, uh, Michael Bay uh -huh. on one side. Yeah who controls all the Transformers. Yeah. And then you've got, uh, and I think also the G.I. Joe movies he was an executive producer on, mm -hmm. uh, but does not control the Fast franchise. Yeah. And so, I don't know, Michael Bay Same likes idea. doing Michael Bay stuff yeah. with Michael Bay. Yeah. You know, Michael Bay loves- That's not work a very collaborative process. He loves working with Michael Bay. Yeah. You know? All right, we got one more piece of CinemaCon news before CinemaCon. we take a break to uh, get a snack. Uh, there was tons of stuff. But I found this fascinating. Scary movie franchise is getting rebooted. Sure. The scary movie franchise. It's time. I, I get, no, no, time, I get it. It's I get time. the cycle, but I am like, we're not in parody humor anymore. Like, we're not doing parodies anymore. Like, scary movie kicked off a time of parodies. You we're not everything. doing, we're not you doing theatrical. sucks, you know? Yeah, we're not doing theatrical comedy we're anymore. We're not. Like, so I'm like, why are we rebooting scary movie? Is anyone going to watch scary movie? I just feel like it's going to go to theaters and like everybody our age and younger is going to be like, that's, is it, that's a bit, is it theatrical? I mean, is it theatrical? Good question. Because this uh, is not, is this CinemaCon news or is this just from this week? Cause, cause if it wasn't at CinemaCon, it's not necessarily theatrical. It was. It was at CinemaCon? Yeah, it was a CinemaCon presentation. Dude, don't, yeah. don't do it. Hey, Y'all, that's straight to VOD. Yeah. Don't put it in a movie theater. I think they are, dude. Don't do it. You yeah. shouldn't do that. So, And I'm somebody who's, you know, I've been screaming from the rooftops, just like Vin Diesel does every day about uh -huh. fighting a dinosaur. Yeah. I go to the rooftop and I scream, put comedies back in movie theaters, you yes, cowards. But I don't know if this is what we meant. But this is not it. Because so, this is going to fail and then they're going to go see comedies don't work anymore. I guess. I don't know. Uh, Neil H. Horitz, who uh, was a producer on the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Great. Is taking up the mantle of scary movie. Sure. I don't know, man. Why not? Uh, also works on the Fast and the Furious movies. Neil okay. Hey, um, and why the hasn't Sonic fought a car in the Fast well, and the I, Furious producers movies? Producers don't have rights to the things that they work no, on. No, but, but you're in the room, buddy. Sure, make it yeah, happen. Make it happen. Uh, there's no announcements right now if uh, anybody from the original films is returning. There's no information about what the hell this is going to be. It was literally just, we're bringing back Scary Movie. And yeah. that's pretty much it. Okay. I just found this so interesting. In all yeah. of the announcements, I was like, Scary I just, Movie. I just don't. Hey, sometimes... Not everything we remember needs to be, not every corpse needs to be exhumed yeah. and autopsied yeah. and, and struck by lightning yeah. and, and brought back to life. Yeah. You know, like not everything needs a reboot. Not everything needs a sequel. Yeah. I, uh, I have fond jokes in my head from the scary movies and that's about all I need. I have a feeling we have blocked out about 30 to 35% of the gags. Oh, I'm the not scary, going back to rewatch them. No, you should. I have a feeling. I don't if, think they hold up at all. I think that's probably a minefield of, of just poor taste. Yep. That's why I say I have not fond memories of the movies or not a fondness of the movies. Yeah. I have fond memories of individual jokes. Yes. From the scary movie franchise. Yes. That's about it. That's all. And that's all you need really. I'm That's curious if there was anything else that uh, you saw at CinemaCon or you saw in any of the announcements at CinemaCon that was super exciting to you or what you're most excited from the stuff that we talked about. 
I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, what are you what are you waiting for to get rebooted that hasn't been rebooted yet? Yeah, what have part you, of your childhood is currently preserved that they could maybe come back and give another go at? Have you been digging through the trash of the late 90s? What what does it look like down there? What yeah. are we forgetting? Right. Where's a Betty Spaghetti movie? Hey. I bet they're doing one. What's up with that Betty Spaghetti movie? Yeah. I heard that was in development. I heard that was a thing. Where's the Betty Spaghetti movie, huh? Did you see the other, the, did you see the big Margot Robbie news before oh, we finish it? Oh, her production it? company was on one of the board game movies. Monopoly, baby. I hope Monopoly uh, gets to be a fun anti-capitalist movie that I, acknowledges that the title I think is Monopoly. Will. I think it will. I, I think if you have Margot Robbie who did Barbie. But and, it's just her- Doug, Production but, but it's her production company, right? And it's all the people from her production company. They made the Barbie movie. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I have a feeling they're not just taking this movie to throw it away. Yeah. Uh, I think that the creative team, mm -hmm. the production team behind Barbie, yeah. when they went so deep into the history of Barbie and mm -hmm. what everything meant. And yeah. Like what it means in the fabric of society. Yes. There is no way you can do Monopoly without acknowledging the landlord's game, without acknowledging yeah. like all of the history of it uh -huh. and how it was supposed to be an anti capitalist game. I'm curious to see um, because I also don't have like a strong idea of what Margot Robbie's production company creates mm -hmm. that isn't. Greta, what Greta Gerwig also creates. Right. Because this isn't the same writing team as Barbie. This isn't the same director as Barbie. So like that does influence thing a lot when you're like, oh, we really got into this. I'm like, yeah, that's the writing. And Margot yeah. Robbie's production team didn't write the movie. No, but they did, they, they did pick the creative team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, and, and then Margot Robbie is at the head of that company. Yeah. And so she, I have a feeling she has the same, they're going to take the same kind of vision that they had with everything else. Cause I they're also so. doing the Sims. Yeah. And you would hope they'd do the same for the Sims. Yeah. Uh, Hopeful for both. Pretty yeah. Cool. Um, all right, Somebody's like, does Titan AE hold up? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jafrika said, I'm just asking for a Polly Pocket movie. Mattel can have that for free. I think that is also already in development. That was in development. It was with, at least on the list of like all the titles that they uh, were going to do movies. Based Lena on. Dunham was attached to it, which we were not happy about, but I have, I've heard, I don't know if it's announced. I don't know if this is true. Wasn't Lena Dunham attached to Barbie too at some point? Uh, I don't know, but she was attached to Polly Pocket, but now I've heard that she will probably not be going ahead with Polly Pocket. Less. Um, so yeah, there you go. Oh no. <laughs> All right. I am going to go get us a little bit of a breakfast treat. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to tell you a little bit about factor when I get back after I go, because there's a, a studio microwave. Uh, I'm going to go heat up the meal. Tamagotchi movie. That's great. I'm going to go heat up a meal for us. Okay. It's deeply appropriate for 9am. This is a breakfast lasagna. Yeah, it's not. It's not a breakfast lasagna. This is Mama's Beef Lasagna Bowl. Here we and go. I am very excited. Until then, you can tell them about something. I don't know. Sure. We'll talk about something. Uh, so, another thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of film that we didn't have in there was this Oswald the Lucky Rabbit horror movie. I don't know if you all heard about this. Uh, Ernie Hudson is, is attached to it now. And... I think it's fascinating. This is another one of those Disney characters. Like if Mickey Mouse is in the public domain, that means Oswald the Lucky Rabbit is in the public domain. And I love Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Uh, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit makes me so happy. And the story of how Disney got Oswald the Lucky Rabbit back in order to make Epic Mickey. Alex, I know you're an Epic Mickey person. You, we've had massive talks about oh, Epic yes. Mickey. I love Oswald the Lucky. Dude, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit rules so hard. It's so cool. And the idea of Oswald living living in an alternate magic kingdom full yeah. of misfits and offshoots and- Where he's the weird king of the misfits. Yes. It he's like cynical about it. I love, I love that a lot. He's so good. And um, so when I heard that there was an Oswald the Lucky Rabbit movie coming out, yeah. uh, I got pretty excited. But Alex- what if I showed you oh, oh. in 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 this browser tab right here, Oswald down the rabbit hole, a horror film? How that do you really good? That looks that that's a good <laughs> that's a that's a good picture. Now you are from the generation yeah. of of everything is found footage horror. Yes, that's true. Every, all childhood, look at this weird videotape I found from the early 90s. Yeah. It has a forgotten show that nobody knew about. 
and it's uh, it's haunted, and it's it's uh, it's funky. I also think there's a lot of found footage video game yes. style stuff that's really popular right now. Just a little bit younger than me, yes, but a lot of like let's plays of that found footage style. Thing. Yeah, there was there was a good like, one that came boys. out uh, that came out a few months ago. That was oh shipwrecked. Shipwrecked yeah. 64 was like a big one. that it, it had this whole lore to it that was like, it's based on these 80s cartoons from this British studio yeah. that closed under mysterious circumstances. I'm a big ARG guy. Yeah. I love that like found footage style, especially on YouTube or like um, even going back to like Slenderman kind of stuff. That, yeah. Like, 2010s ARG. I'm yeah. really into it. So I, I like that stuff, but yeah. I don't think... Everything needs to be that. No, and I agree particularly with you. like when you grab an old when you grab an old license, uh, a lot of people want to go this way with it. Yeah. I'm reminded of like the Banana Splits movie, which mm -hmm. like Banana Splits were like this popular 70s Hanna Barbera thing. Yeah, and they made it into a Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Well, that's the thing, right? because it's they were Five like Nights kids like Five Nights at Freddy's, and it's like it's so big. All right, I think there are indie filmmakers on YouTube who are doing it better, you know? And you don't, and and the whole idea, it's like the Winnie the Pooh blood and honey thing from last year, where it's yeah. like, I get it. It's incongruous. This thing that we grew up with that we love is actually- what if it was dark and horrible? Yeah, it was a monster, Mario.exe, like all that stuff. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want this with Oswald. Uh, but the deal is uh, with this movie is this guy Art and some of his friends get transported to a place shrouded by dark Hollywood magic. They come across Oswald, uh, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit come to life and must work to escape their magical prison before the rabbit gets to them first. No. Oh. Oh. Oh, is that a breakfast lasagna? Why, this is a good Lasagna meat. I've brought you a fork. Thank you. To partake in the lasagna. Let me get my microphone back. Yeah. A little brunch lasagna. Hey, it's Tell 10 a.m. here. This is breakfast. Tell me uh, about this lasagna. This is Mama's Beef Lasagna's Mama's Beef Lasagna Bowl with Parmesan zucchini on the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the most appropriate meal for the time of the day that we do this. Uh, this is one of our factory meals. I, I got a whole freaking box of these delivered to my door, which means I'm not cooking all week. It's been stellar. Uh, this is great. I had one the other day that was a like garlic chicken and um, green beans that was phenomenal. Uh, personally, I heated that one up in a pan instead of the microwave and thought that it was lovely, a great improvement on it. Mm -hmm. I love a, I love a good, just like quick heat in a pan instead yeah. of a microwave. This was heated in the microwave because we're at the studio. Uh, looks good. I'm not normally a, a microwave vegetables guy, but uh -huh. this, this zucchini is actually really good. Uh, these are ready in two minutes. Because look, we're all a bunch of neurodivergent folks that sometimes if it takes more than two minutes, won't feed ourselves. And mm -hmm. let's be honest, uh, you can get balanced meals that are totally catered to whatever your needs are food wise right to your door. You can get a whole box of them. You can choose how many meals that you want in your box. You can choose how frequently you want to get deliveries on it. You can uh, choose when to eat them. Just because they send you a lasagna doesn't mean that you can't eat it first thing in the morning. It's actually pretty good. It's really good. Wow. I keep I keep I going just, back. I thought it was going to feel more inappropriate at 10 a.m. No, I thought good. I was going to take a bite and I was going to be like, that's rough at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. It's not. It was really good. Um, you can sign up using our link and our code. You get 50% off your first box, which is a stellar freaking deal. Um, Literally, I'm feeding myself for an entire week off that 50% off box, which is really, really awesome. Uh, the wellness shots are great. If you like me also aren't going to eat a lot of vegetables, maybe you didn't put a lot of vegetables in your box, get those wellness shots. I am I am one of those people. I am one of those people where if I walk into a coffee shop or or something like that and they have like the little shots, yep. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll be like, give me one of those, give me one of those like immunity shots, one of those vitamin yeah. C filled. Like, uh-huh. I try to do it. Um, and I will be honest, I hadn't regularly done it beforehand. And now that they showed up at my door, I was like, all right, let's try it. And uh, look, you take it as a shot for a reason. Wellness shots are not your your tastiest, but they're your healthiest. They're yeah. going to make you feel good. Um, that's what it's about. That's what it's about, baby. They have tons of options. They have options if you're vegetarian, vegan, keto, whatever your needs are in it, uh, you can customize your box. I, as somebody who's an incredibly picky eater, was able to pick out an entire box of meals that I will eat. And I'm not joking. There's 
The list of things that I will eat is so much shorter than the list of things that I will not. Sage's food pyramid is just is just two triangles. Yeah. It's not even a full structural pyramid. It collapses in on itself. But pasta's in it. Mamma mia. But mamma mia, pasta's in it. <laughs> I've had vegetables with every one of these meals. It's ridiculous. That never happens. Hype, man. I do love pasta. Every time I, every time I have uh, something like this, uh -huh. I'm just like, man, I do love pasta. Man, I got to eat more pasta. But I don't like making pasta. <laughs> yeah. I don't like doing it. Yeah. Particularly something like a lasagna, I don't like doing no, it. No, it's way too difficult to make. But this is very good. And I, oh, great. this makes me go, oh yeah, lasagna. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I love it. Oh yeah, and I don't make that for myself. Oh no. It's really awesome. There is absolutely no prep. There is no mess. Even from me, who can make a mess out of anything. I figured. I've watched her spill on herself three times this morning. Yeah. So no mess really means something. Uh, everything's ready in two minutes. There are 34 plus dietitian approved meals, 45 add-ons that you can cater to your lifestyle to get whatever you want out of your food. That's great. It was really great. We appreciate Factor for sponsoring today's episode, uh, doing things like checking out sponsors if you're interested mm -hmm. is a direct way to support our show and allow us to keep yeah. doing it. Yeah, so if this sounds so mildly interesting to you at all, please go check it out. Uh, use our link. Yeah. Uh, and help support the show and the entire studio. Yeah. It's very cool of you and we appreciate it. And hey, when we get food sponsorships, we get to eat the stuff. Mamma mia. That's great. That's You'll notice most of the ones that we take for the show are food based. Listen. I'll tell you, you can tell the motivation of that. We're garfing good. We're garfing good. Hey, would you send an email to Factor, uh, to Factor and mm -hmm. let them know that I think that their uh, slogan should be we're garfing good. Yeah. Will you let them know that? Yeah. Because I think, tell them they can have that for free as part, of, uh, as part of the deal with us. Okay, yeah. I'll give them that free suggestion of a tagline of, and it's, and it's sorry, let me take it. it we're garfing good? We're garfing good. We're garfing good. We're garfing good. Yeah. Okay. All uh, right. And you can even, if they let you put a little note on your order. Don't do that. <laughs> actually, don't do that one. Uh, I'm actually going to stop you there. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to clear this out. Okay. So that we can continue with right. the show. Great. But yeah, use the code, use the link, get 50% off, get your free wellness shots, uh, get yourself food that is actually really good and you'll eat. Uh, this is, there's nothing better from a microwave. Honest to God. Honest. Uh, I'm not going to feed myself anything better. Than no. Um, okay. She's gone. Quick. Talk about Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Ah, dang it. Shoot. Damn. Oh, never mind. Oswald. She's gone. Uh, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit as a horror reboot. I don't know if I like it. Sounds like they're just doing a more horror style epic Mickey. Mouse, which make more epic Mickey. I mean, just yeah. I mean, they're doing, doing it. Doing they're, that, yeah, but. just keep just keep making more epic Mickey. Keep making more epic Mickey, please. Yeah. Hello, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Okay. Horror film. Uh, but did you talk about the game? Did I talk about the game? No, I didn't talk about the game. Oh, it's not Oswald. It's in that same like vein though. Yeah, the Steamboat the Willie Steamboat game. Steamboat Willie one. Yeah. This is all like stuff that we're doing with public domain of classic figures. Uh, which, it was just a quick thing. We got a gameplay trailer for Mouse, uh, which is a like brutal beat em up game yes. uh, utilizing the public domain Steamboat Willie. Yeah, but it's okay. So it does use Steamboat Willie style characters mm -hmm. and stuff, but- Playside is definitely trying to make it their own thing. Like yeah. it's evoking Steamboat Willie, yeah. but they're not like, ha ha, you this skip is Steamboat Willie. Yeah. Um, this is a first person game. This kind of reminds me of like Inkwell, something like that. Yeah. Uh, where it is just a, a first person shooter set in this cartoon world. Yeah. And I think that's very fun. Uh, I didn't think I was going to like it because I was like, I don't like games that are edgy for the sake of being edgy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm really not a fan of that. Um, and then I watched the trailer and I was like, actually, this looks very fun. The like first person angle when you've got the big gloves and you're just punching. Yeah. I'm like, actually, that looks like a blast. Yeah. You eat, you like eat spinach and get muscles. Yeah. I, a lot of people are comparing this to Cuphead, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, but I think the reason that this is that Cuphead is a particularly apt comparison isn't just because it's pulling from the same like the same sort of era. It's because they look like they're taking the same amount of um, care and detail yeah. with the era. Because there have been a lot of Cuphead likes mm -hmm. since Cuphead has came out, or things that try to use that classic cartoon like yeah. rubber hose style animation. Right. This looks like it cares, and they know what they're doing. Yeah. Which is what's important about it. I think it looks really fun. I think the animation looks 
fabulous. Mm-hmm. I think the way that they integrate the like 2D into it is really, really fun. Um, I, I was very pleasantly surprised when I clicked on it, expecting to be like, ugh, okay. Yeah. You know? Another one of these. No, this is good. I just feel like every time they do that, same thing with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, is like every time they pull this, like, ooh, it's a children's thing in the public domain. Yeah. We're going to ruin it because that's, that's funny. But I think that's the thing is that because this isn't, because this isn't taking directly Steamboat Willie. Yeah. Because it's not like, this is a Steamboat Willie game, but it's violent. It's like, no, this no is it's like, actually its own game. It's like cartoon gangster just it's in cute. mice and like- That's called Mouse. Yeah, coming out- I also think that's a fun title. Yeah, coming out uh, in 2025, mm-hmm. uh, only for PC announced right now, no specific date. Yeah, um, very exciting. Available to wishlist on Steam right now. Anthony. Sage. You ever played Fortnite? I've heard of it. That's the that's the uh, game where um, where the last Airbender uh, can shoot Superman with a rocket launcher. Yeah, that one. Yeah, you're all probably familiar. It's a good game. You're all probably uh, familiar with the fact that there's a, a good bit of competitive scene in Fortnite. Mm-hmm. A lot of pros out here. Yeah. Okay. And we also know that in all esports, women are very underrepresented in a lot of these tournaments. Right? It's women true. are commonly excluded from esports. However. If only we could figure out why. If only we could figure out what If only we could was. figure out what any of the issues were. But it's okay. So one organization said, no, we want to include women. We want to do an all women's Fortnite tournament. That's great. And I was like, hell yeah. Okay. They're not the first. There's been women's Fortnite sure. tournaments, but like we love to hear it every time, yeah. right? And they're-, they're They want to do it big though. But they want to do it. Big, right? Yeah. This big is big sponsor. There's a whole website up just for this tournament. Yeah. A two hundred and fifty thousand dollar prize pool. This is like the largest prize pool or one of the largest prize pools yeah. in Fortnite esports. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty K is huge. That's incredible. And this is and this is uh an inclusive tournament that says anybody who identifies as a woman yeah. is welcome to compete in this tournament. They have on here, women compose nearly half the gaming community yet comprise only 5% of esports players with no representation in the top 500 highest overall earners. So we decided to help level the playing field in esports with- That's that's great. So who's doing it? Milk. It's the Milk Cup. The all women's Fortnite tournament with a $250,000 prize pool looking to level the playing field for women in gaming (laughs) is the Milk Cup. Oh no, the gamers. They called it the Milk Cup. The gamers, don't do it. Yeah, they did. They said milk is fueling change by creating the milk cup in partnership with at the peach cobbler, Woat and Radiance all women production team, a women take all tournament series where anyone who identifies as a woman can compete safely and ruthlessly against one another for the largest prize pool in North America. The milk cup. Sponsored by milk. Milk cup by milk. Um, Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. Mm -hmm. Did we... Did we, when we were looking at what we were going to call this, uh-huh. knowing, mm-hmm. knowing the way women get treated uh-huh. in video games, yeah. did we all sit down and really say the milk cup? When we were blue sky solutioneering, mm-hmm. what was on the whiteboard? Was it literally just the milk cup yeah. very large? Uh, no, the first one was the B cup. I was gonna say the milk. How large was it? Like yeah. a double D on, yeah, the, yeah. on the thing. <laughs> the first one was the B cup. Yeah, and then they tried the C cup. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they tried the diva cup. Uh huh. Yeah, and then they landed on the milk cup. That's right. Yeah. And the and and everybody in the room said, "Still seems too small. <laughs> Still seems too small." Yeah. <laughs> they ruined Tifa. <laughs> is what I, they said. There's a lot of misinformation going around about this. Uh, A lot of things I saw on Reddit and on Twitter where people were saying, I can't believe Epic Games is doing this. I can't believe Fortnite is doing this. This is not- It's this not an official Epic Games thing. It literally says across all over the website that there is this is in no way sponsored or in collaboration with Epic Games in any way. I understand people can host esports tournaments in any game. Yeah, I understand the confusion though because uh, because lately over the last like five ten years the biggest events in esports have been sponsored things, by have been things where the companies are running their own leagues. Yeah. They're running their own tournaments. Yeah. 
So I can understand the initial misunderstanding, but they're pretty clear that this is not an official Fortnite thing. Yeah. I feel like Fortnite's a little smarter about branding than this. Yeah. If well, were, I mean, they did that Shell collab, so I don't know about that. But once again, yeah, no, they, they did. They did that Fossil Fuels collab, they so did. I don't know if that was much better. This is at gonnaneedmilk.com slash milk cup. Uh, they say the performance drink of gamers. Hey, gamers. Hey, gamers. If you're if you're looking for just a little bit of that extra boost. Yeah. During, you know, if you need, if you need to get your energy levels up, yeah. if you need to, uh, Black man. if you need to get your, like, if you need to get your perception going, you really yeah. need, you really need that edge when you're playing games. What you want to <sighs> do is down like 16 to 24 ounces of yeah. pure dairy. You know, when you're really in it on a gaming session yeah. and you reach over and you grab your glass of milk That's and you just there? toss that back. It's been a few hours into your gaming yeah. session. You got to have a drink that can sit there for a few hours. You have a few hours in your gaming session. You reach over, you grab your lukewarm glass of milk yeah, and you and just the, toss that back and while then you're ten, in the queue. Yeah. And then 10 minutes later, you're still sitting there. You don't need to get up for any reason. Yeah. You're feeling good. You got to get something that can keep you in it. Yeah, that's right. You can stay right. in. This is, this is like, do you remember, uh, do you remember Gogurt? Yeah. Do you remember when they were trying to say that like, hey, if you're an athlete at the, at the if you're at the basketball court. Yeah, you got to quick slurp some yogurt. Yeah, you got to down some yogurt yeah. real quick from a tube. And then get out and be active and then after run. you've slurped down some Gogurt. Yeah. Hey, do you remember how we discovered yogurt? It was a bunch of milk sloshing around in saddlebags. Uh -huh. You don't want to be drinking a lot of dairy and then running around. Yeah. You don't want to be drinking a lot of dairy and then doing anything, really. No, sure enough. Uh, I don't want to be drinking a lot of dairy, full stop, but here we are. Do you think that all of the competitors in this tournament will mm -hmm. be forced to drink milk? I do. Do you think like they're they're their glasses and yeah. their, their bottles and will I have to be filled with I think that this is milk. another way that we keep women out of gaming. That's right. I think that this is, uh, I think that this is like some sort of sabotage. I don't understand why uh, it looks like they all keep formatting, they all keep forfeiting the match. Yeah. All the, all, all the women keep getting up and, and running away. I don't understand what's going on. It's like they don't want to win this $250,000. What's, what's happening? God, you know, women and those lines for the bathrooms. Yeah, jeez. Uh, are they all fixing their makeup? Uh, what? Are, uh, it is so strange. It is so funny. It's so confusing. The photos they use all over the website to be like, look how inclusive we are. This person has like a shaved head. I just- Look at that. Bald women. How did a room full of people- that, Lactose tolerant women. That's what I'm saying. Like, how did a room full of- I. There, there were women in the room, right? I don't know. We don't know. They say this is being put on by an all woman production company. Yeah, the, pe the Peach Cobbler, right? Is an e is a, is an all woman production, like esports production team or something like that. Uh, but how did they all sit in the room and not know about hot girl tummy troubles? Well, I don't think that they didn't know. I don't think there's. I I couldn't say for a moment that they didn't know. Are they trying to? Are they trying to counteract? Uh huh. Hot girl tummy troubles. Are they trying to say? True hot girls that esports, uh huh, real gamer girls, yeah, don't have tummy troubles. The, the milk is great for them. No, they drink twenty four to sixty four ounces. They just have a gallon. Yeah, just a gallon a day, and uh, and a cute straw. Yeah, you know, they put put a gallon into a Stanley Ooh, cup. Ooh, milk out of a straw. Good. Milk through a straw. Yeah. Put it through a Stanley cup, get mm -hmm. a little lead in your milk. That's right. For fun, mm. as a treat, and that is how we support women. Yeah. The milk cup. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I can't wait for a woman in esports to have to have the title uh, champion at the milk cup. Yep. I'll be at the milk cup. Yeah. Catch me on the milk cup. Catch me competing for the, for milk, the milk cup. cup. The replies are going to be so good on social media. Oh, yeah. Everyone's going to love this. Everyone's going to love it. And they're going to love it for the right reasons. Yeah. Nobody's going to make this weird at all. No associations, aside from the fact that nobody wants to drink actual milk. No associations between feminine bodies and milk is no. in, ev in any way going to get weird. Especially not in the gaming community. No. There is not like a, there are not any weird terms or anything no. like that going around yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are different categories that you can win within the milk cup. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so I see here. Let's take a look. Uh, okay, we've none got. The, I can't say any. I'm, none of the mm-hmm. things that I want to say are appropriate. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, so I'm not going to do it. There's uh, trios, battle royale, build, uh, build tournament, and then of course the main event, uh, the big mommy milkers. That's there. It is. That's the one that I couldn't say. Thank you for getting it out yeah, there. Yeah, that's uh, that's the top. That's the top final. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollar win. The, the see, big mommy milkers. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking more most forward to the um, to the big duos competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the. I'm looking for the big duos in the milk cup. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to 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 milk duos. Yeah, yeah. To milk and some duos. It's gonna uh, be good. <laughs> everyone, uh, no, that's not actually the the thing. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for being so compelling and convincing no, it, when it, I said it. Understandably, but, uh, you would no. think that that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The milk cup is real, but the big mommy milkers trophy is here's, definitely not. Here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. They should have done it. They should have leaned all the way in if they're going to be this bad. Yeah. They should have been like, no, we're owning this and we're doing it tongue in cheek. I mean, hear me out. We got to, I think as a world, we need to do more for the titty streamers. Yes. Uh, they, they get a lot of flack. They get a lot of hate. They're doing important work on Twitch. And well, this so, is not sarcastic. I love them. They're, do, they're um, doing it. They're this doing is, the work. I want to be so clear that this is not sarcastic. Uh, I think that that is great. I, I love, I'm not one. I love them. Yeah. Uh, and I think that would be genuinely a hilarious collab that I think a lot of people would be down for. I think it would be amazing. Yeah. I think it would be amazing. But you know, here's the thing. Big Milk. Mm-hmm is too afraid. Big Mommy Milk is too yeah, afraid. Big Mommy Milk is too afraid. Is too afraid yeah. of, of their image. Yeah. And so Big Mommy Milk won't do what they need to do as a brand. <sighs> then down with Big Mommy Milk. Step on my throat, Big Mommy Milk. Oy, <laughs> yay. Hey, you know what? This is not the last thing that we have. We've still got more. And I feel like this leads us into this, right? So uh, a lot of people are like, whoa, buddy, that's not very progressive of you to call it the milk cup. No. To not rename it something else. You can even collaborate with milk and you could have called it something else. But you know, that was milk's PR team being like, I'm sorry, we actually, we have to call it that. Like it has to be. If we're going to put 250,000 down, it's got to be the milk cup. And you know that all women production company were like, yeah. we have a chance to give women in esports $250,000. We can't say no, right? The winner in every division will get a will get a trophy that's just a big jug. Yeah. And who will take home the big jugs this year? Yeah. You know, like the Oscar. Yeah. yeah. The big jugs at the all women's esports tournament. That's right. Of course, yes. Uh, <laughs> in contrast, some things, people are saying, not exactly progressive. Some things... The world is thinking it's gone a little too far. Yeah. Gone a little too progressive for their you liking. Gotta, listen, put that green M&M in some orthopedic shoes because her high heels are turning me on. Yeah. Actually, it's the opposite. They want her back in the high heels. All right. They say, don't you, don't you let that green M&M stop turning me on. Well, then I don't know where anybody's coming from where- at any time. And neither does anyone on Fox News who recently did a segment about the new edition of Scrabble. Now, Scrabble gets new editions regularly. Yeah. Because, and and normal human people who can read and have been through at least a grade would probably be like, yeah, that makes sense. There's new editions of Scrabble all the time. Like every game. Sure. Every, you know, Scrabble is one of those like perennial board games. It's, yeah. If you, if you own a home and you have board games, one of them's probably Scrabble if yeah. you're an adult. I played Scrabble recently on the channel. We had a great time. With Scrabble's it. dope. We did a Scrabble stream literally a few weeks ago. It was excellent. But two best kinds of people to play Scrabble with: mm-hmm. uh, writers mm-hmm. and scientists. Mm, yeah, because they are going to come at you with shit where you're just like, "How dare you?" Yeah, you're putting down like door. Yeah, and you're like, "Get wrecked." Yeah, or doorish. Yeah, and you're like, "Is doorish a thing?" Like, if something looks like a door, kind of like a door. And then they'll throw down phthalates yeah. and there are like so many P's and T's, T's and phthalates. And yeah. they're just like, I scored 87 bazillion points. And you're like, all right, all I right. guess. All right. Dorish. Well, if you were playing with liberal blue haired leftists, yeah. uh, you might get some words that Fox News is not real fond of because here's the thing with Scrabble. You could always make any words Wait. that you wanted. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Is... 
Does Fox News have a problem with the fact that people can make words out of Scrabble tiles? Is that where we're getting? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, they do. What is the what is the definition of Scrabble going woke or Scrabble uh this a Scrabble edition being too woke? Well, let me tell you. Okay. One, why are we updating it? Scrabble was good enough as is. Well, because you gotta you gotta keep printing. Scrabble, Scrabble. has an easy mode now. Cause everybody needs a participation ribbon. A Scrabble. You know, that game that a lot of people play with their children. What is an easy mode in Scrabble? Well, if you would listen to Fox News, which I would imagine, I hope none of you ever would, uh, you would believe that it has no scoring, no points, no winners. I don't think that's true. And it wouldn't be true. Yeah, I don't think that's true. It actually would not be true. That sounds wrong. They put out an actual broadcast on the television. Yeah. Okay. On wait. Fran Drescher's television. Wait, are you telling me Fox News put something out that they didn't fact check? <gasps> or or are you saying that they're misrepresenting facts? Uh-huh. So what is the um what is the deal with the real easy mode then? They say Scrabble is dumbing itself down for the woke. Okay. They say that it is uh essentially there's now just like a less competitive version in it. Um, that is all about completing specific goals. And there are hint cards that you can utilize. Okay. They can help you to make words. All right. And then, oh, this, yeah, goal-based. Like they do this on the Scrabble app where it's yes. like the first person to use X number of this letter. Correct. Or the first person to make three words that do this. Right, which makes it a, a version of the game. Mind you, this yeah. is just an additional, like not even like the Scrabble box only comes with this. This is now just also in the Scrabble box. Yeah, these are just alternate rule sets, which people make for games all the time. Correct. Where you can play with specific goals because maybe you've played a lot of Scrabble and you want to switch it up. Maybe you want to do something that's not just like, how can I get the most points, but I want to get right. creative with it. Or you are like, like people are saying, like you're saying you're playing with your family. Yeah. You're playing with somebody who's like, ah, I don't like, I, I, my vocabulary is not great for whatever reason. I don't like playing Scrabble because I can never come up. It's like, cool. Well, we'll do this goal-based Scrabble where yeah. like, uh, cause if you're sitting around and you want to play a game, Here's what games are about. Yeah. Being fun and inclusive and playing with your friends. You want to play with your kids. These hint cards can help them learn spelling. It's great. But Fox News had no interest in getting the actual information. Instead, sure. they came out hot and they were like, they're banning words in Scrabble. No, they're not. No, they're not. They are making it so that nobody wins Scrabble. They're making it so it's not competitive because all of the liberals can't ha handle competition anymore. They're not banning words in Scrabble. I hate, this is something that's, that's come up before, mm -hmm. uh, particularly with right-wing media where like they'll come up with a term yeah. and they'll decide that that term is a word and yeah. because it's not in a dictionary. Right. Which the Scrabble rule is, hey, it's gotta be a dictionary word and no proper nouns. Yeah. Like, Standard Scrabble rules. So in this, and it's rough here, they say they've removed certain words. They banned racist and LGBTQ slurs from the tournaments. Okay. But there are also new words, you know, that the woke generation would be very comfortable with. So is this more about wokeism, this new Scrabble, or is it about HDHD? I mean, ADHD and the fact that they need friends and they need hints and they can't spell. HDHD is what they were originally going to call 4K. They were like, think about HD. Now, what if I told you we're going to do HDHD? Can you imagine it being like, you know, because the woke left can't spell and then, and following that with saying, what is it, HDHD? Can you imagine you know, going out in public and saying, what is it, HDHD? These dummies can't spell and being like, yeah. All I these fucking kids, ate that. That was these, a great news broadcast I just did. All these kids that can't spell listening to ACDC. What? <laughs> no, ADHD. Huh? <laughs> like, it feels like an SNL skit. Like, it feels so unreal. Like, it is too ridiculous. You can, it is almost getting to the point where comedy can, can't exist because reality is too ridiculous. You can't, you can always tell when we are right after like a primary or a voting season or, mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah. or politics are out of session right now yeah. or something because Fox is just like, fill the air. Yeah. We got to fill the air. Uh, oh, it was this a Gutfeld thing? Oh God, Greg oh, yeah. Gutfeld. If you're oh, not yeah. familiar with Greg Gutfeld, Greg Gutfeld is the guy on Fox News who they decided was going to be their hilarious late night host. 
to counter the left's hilarious the left's hilarious late night hosts, Greg Gutfeld is probably the least funniest man on the planet. Unsurprising that somebody who's supposed to be funny on Fox News is not funny. Uh, in response, they have a liberal host, which anybody who's on Fox News, I don't believe is actually probably very liberal. Sure. Uh, Jessica Tarlov, who said, uh, well, removing slurs is something that we could all agree was a good move, right? Yes. Uh, to which they replied, not so fast. And be careful, Jessica. Uh, yeah, She no. said, well, maybe they're making a lighter version of the game. So it could appeal to younger people. Like, you know, people playing with their kids. Scrabble can be a tough game. And Greg Gutfield said, so is life. You know, Scrabble should be just like real life. Get a job. I saw a movie with a, where a baby had a job. Not only yeah. did the baby have a job, the baby was the boss of the whole thing. Yeah. If that baby can be a boss, then your kid needs to toughen up and go and get a job. Uh, I love the hold on not so fast at the removal of slurs. Literally said first, racial slurs. First of all, it doesn't matter. Oh, don't it, loop first, me into that. First of all, it doesn't matter uh, whether your garbage brain believes that you can use racial slurs. According to the traditional laws of Scrabble, the traditional rules of Scrabble, you couldn't use those anyway. They're not dictionary words. Yeah. Nothing has changed. Yeah. Banning a slur is just because some asshole at a Scrabble convention mm -hmm. will idiotically try to play in a tournament. Correct. One of those words and it'll cause a thing when that word's not even legal to begin with. Continuing, they're not done. Anthony, they're not done. Okay. Judge Jeannie cut in and asked Gutfield if he thought that Mattel was gonna make the squares different colors as to not offend people. Some of the squares have different colors because they're worth, mm, they Gutfeld have different colors on the joked bottom. that he hoped so, and then admitted he's never played Scrabble, but decided to weigh in on the controversy anyway. Very cool, Greg. Very cool, Greg. <laughs> that's, that's Fox News. <laughs> That's Fox News summed up in one statement. We didn't know anything about it, so we thought we'd say everything about it. Continued, playing a game without scoring, even if you suck at something, is so anti-human. It's like scoring is a part of your DNA, you know? Mm. You need to keep track. Yeah. I'm the world's worst tennis player. Sure. I love keeping score when I play tennis, even when I lose six to zero, because I need to keep score. I'm surprised the new Scrabble didn't come with four trophies, so everybody feels like they won. Again, that is just a factual inaccuracy. There is still scoring in Scrabble. And it already comes with four participation trophies. It always has. <laughs> that not, part's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Look, uh, this, is so, <laughs> this is so ridiculous. It's, it's so stupid. And it, it, honestly, even though this is the dumbest little thing, yeah. it's such... It's, it's an important analogy. Mm -hmm. Like this is an encapsulation of what, of what Fox News does with everything. Yeah. And that's why it's great that it's something so easy and recognizable as Scrabble. Mm -hmm. You can point at this and go, they do this. Yes. But with laws. Everything. They do this about politics. They yeah. Do, they're just like, well, I don't know about it, but here's how I they feel. They can just make shit up and say it on television. They remember that they literally went to Congress, they literally went to the government and said, we are not a news network, we are an entertainment network. Fox News. Remember, they said that. And be suspicious of all people who say that. They, they released text messages between Fox News talent and producers where they talked about how what they're doing on TV is bullshit yeah. and they don't believe it. Yeah. But it will do well. Whoops. Correct. So, uh, anyways. I challenge Greg Gutfeld to Scrabble and tennis at the same time. I challenge him to a fist fight. I challenge him to walk into the ocean and never come back. Yeah. I challenge Greg Gutfeld to find an active volcano and look real close. Yeah. I'll meet him there. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, and I think this is not unrelated final piece of news. We'll get to how it's related, I promise. It'll come around. A new trailer was released for Star Wars Outlaws. Yes. We're very excited for Outlaws. The game looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. It looks unbelievable. We got to see, uh, 
we're still we're still looking for gameplay, right? Uh -huh. We're still yeah. looking for gameplay. Yeah. We got a story trailer though, and the story trailer looks amazing. Yes. We uh, are not gonna show it. Uh no. I think for the most part, we'll show some photos and stuff of it, but it's also kind of old news now, right? Like yeah. the trailer's been out. You've seen the trailer if you want to see the trailer. If you haven't, you can go watch the trailer. Yeah, but, but what we want to talk about is some of the reaction to the trailer. Now, we know that when this game was initially announced and we saw some of the initial things, we saw people being like, I can't believe it's gender locked where I have to play as a woman, which <laughs> they didn't say when they had to play as Cal Kestis, which is so interesting that it's a problem that it's gender locked now. Well, I but said, I can't believe that I'm locked into playing a ginger. There we go. I said, no way. Exactly. And yet. And yet. And yet you proceeded. Uh, this time around- I persevered is what I would call it, Sage. Yeah, you did. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and this time around, as we get another gameplay trailer, uh, being mad that it is a woman is old news. Now, Reddit is mad that it's not a woman they considered attractive enough. They are saying that woke Disney Star Wars took the initial image that they had released of Kay Vest, the new lead character from Star Wars Outlaws, a smuggler, an outlaw. Yeah. And they said that she was hot in the original image and now she's ugly. Oh no. Well, let's take a look. Let's compare. Let's compare. Uh, let's first just like look at her, right? Yeah. Okay. First of all, she's cute. Yeah. That is besides the point. Second of all, she doesn't need to be. She doesn't need to be cute. It's weird that we would say she needs to be cute. Yeah. She is a beautiful character. Uh, she is based off of a face model of a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. um, so it is very strange because it's, because it is like objectively untrue. But the thing I find even stranger is this like comparison of the initial. Okay. Like she looked different before. Yeah. So if you'll go to my screen, Alex, I'll show you here. Oh, there we go. Uh, what she looked like in this initial image, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. She looked great. She, she has a cool great. axolotl as a companion. Yeah, Nyx. Yeah, love that. Uh, and then Whoa, here's a photo. That? This is just a photo of her from the trailer. She looks- No, who is that? No, she looks the same, Anthony. I, I mean, I'm zoomed in a little bit now, but she looks the same. Look, no, look, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and forth. All right. Okay. Yeah. K Vess. Yeah. K Vess. No, it's, what are you doing? K Vess. Uh huh. Yeah, K Vess. To K Who Vess. is that though? That you keep showing. Well, that's K Vess. No, she, she looks the same. Anthony. What are you doing? They didn't change anything. Is that from like a totally different game or something? Let's let's talk about this for a second. Okay. People are pointing out these differences. There's no difference between between these two photos. Betwixt? Betwixt them. There's no difference between these two photos. That's um, the same woman. They didn't even change her features in any way. No, I mean, I now we've got a full trailer, so we've gotten to see her in motion a little bit more. But this just feels like when they were upset that Aloy had skin texture. And no, I remember fuzz. that. But this, like, you're showing me two different people. Well, well, let's okay. Let's let's put a pin in that though, because I do agree. Uh huh. That K Vess, yeah, and whoever it is that you showed me, uh, are just as attractive as any other Star Wars character. They, yeah, they look just as good. It's very strange because they're giving this idea of like previously Star Wars did this, now they are doing blank, which is yeah. like this idea that like Star Wars characters have always been hot, or is this a standard we only hold? Women in the franchise, too. I would say that Star Wars characters, for the most part, mm -hmm. are supposed to look, like in the movies, they will like they cast incredibly attractive people. Mm -hmm. And then you, like, you make them look, you dirty them up and you make them look- Look like they're at war. Look like they're look at like war. They look like they're at war. Yeah, like uh, they're not, like they're not walking like, a red carpet. I just don't see, and if we can go back to my screen here, like I don't see any scenario where it's like, okay, well, this is what a Star Wars character looks like, right? Yeah. And you're like, this is a totally different league than K Vess is in? Yeah, no. Like, what are no. we what are we saying? There's uh What are Sam, we saying? Sam Whitworth, everybody's favorite sexy Frankenstein. Look, this is Kotor? Yeah. These are all normal looking people. Yeah, that's a normal, that's a normal bunch of people. These have always been normal looking people. That's so, completely normal. So well, I'm gonna go back to K-Vest now. Sure. Okay. And I'm going to show you 
three photos okay. of KVS. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ready? Yeah. One. All right. KVS. Yeah. Two. No. Who is that? Three. I could see where people get the three of them mixed up, maybe. The three of them? Yeah. Anthony, there's no difference between these, these photos of this woman. I could see where, like, you, you would maybe, like, maybe they're cousins or something like that. I, I guess, like, if the, I saw them all in a lineup, maybe, I would say, like, yeah, they're pretty, like, maybe they're close. They look, but they're, like, three different people. Let's, let's do an experiment. Okay. You can't be here. We're doing a show. I'm sorry, but that's my, that's actually my co-host's seat. You, Anthony. Act, you can't, you gotta, Anthony, you gotta go. You gotta go. Oh, thank goodness. I, you gotta lock the doors or something while we're doing this or like put an on-air light. It's ridiculous. You can't be here. Fuck off. Hi. Anyway, we, maybe we could get security or something. Is this an object permanence thing? Object permanence thing? Okay, let's, as, I don't understand. As, a, as a community, consider the idea that maybe it's not actually a problem that the men of Reddit are just misogynist, and maybe, maybe it's that they actually can't recognize people with small differentiations between their features. Oh. Like if, if you see me in a different lighting yeah. or glasses on or- like a, like a face blindness or how do all of you people keep getting in here? All of? Yeah. Sage, there's like, there's just like so many people coming in here. Did the address leak or something? Let's try something. Okay. Anthony. Who is this man? That's Han Solo. Okay. That's Han Solo. Han Solo. You know Star Wars pretty well. Yeah, that's Han Solo from Star Wars. Okay. It's Han Solo from Star Wars. Can you go back to it? There we go. Uh, That's Han Solo from Star Wars. Are you sure? Yeah. You recognize that as Han Solo? I know Han Solo, yeah. Han Solo. The smuggler. Mm Mm-hmm. Han Solo made the Kessel run. Han Solo, Ben Solo's dad. That's, yeah. I don't understand. Like, how can you tell that this is all the same person? And if I put glasses on, you can't. Harrison Ford. I can't believe they switched out the character on people. I mean, I don't mind, but it feels weird that you would bait and switch people with a character like that. I'd expect more from Star Wars. Well, I don't know what that experiment proved necessarily, but I do feel like we've gathered some information and maybe if we take the understanding of what we've just experienced here and apply it to the men of Reddit, we'll feel the need to tear our hair out a little bit less each day while we try to survive on the internet. Maybe if we just assume that all of them just just work like Anthony. Yeah, and we care about when video game companies bait and switch us like this. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I think that's it. I think we're done. Okay. I think that's all the show that we have time for. I have to go have a crisis about the people that are allowed in this studio in two capacities. You've uh, really got to fix yeah. up security. That's I've, all I'm I've saying. I've got to really consider who should be here and who shouldn't. But that is for another time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for spending your morning with us. Thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring today's episode. Go follow our link and get yourself some good quick food. Follow the link. Use the code. Get yourself some good discounted meals and some free wellness shots. Uh, It directly supports the channel when you get yourself delicious meals. How cool is that? Yeah. How neat is that? 
We're very appreciative. We Thank all you very survive. Much. Woo. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> the basics. We're all simply fed. We need to talk about it, Anthony. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk after we're gonna talk after the show. We're gonna talk after the show. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk after the show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here with us today. We appreciate you so very much. If you are watching the video on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe. Hell, turn on notifications. Get notified when a new thing comes out. That's there's right. lots of fun other stuff coming out in addition to It's Too Early right now. And you don't want to miss any of it. No. We're making lots of things. Tons of originals are popping up on the YouTube channel, and uh, you're going to want to see them. You also are going to want to see everything here. Thank you to everybody who followed and subscribed and supports us. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also support us through Patreon. That's a huge, huge deal. Patreon.com slash Pixel Circus. You get tons of bonus content there. And thank you to everybody who's just been spreading the word about the show. We appreciate that as well. Word of mouth has been absolutely wonderful. Sharing it with a friend sharing when we go live. Mm -hmm. We appreciate all that stuff. We are an independent network and you make what we do possible and we appreciate you so much. Thank you to everybody who suggested stories in the Discord today. Thank you to everybody who left your comments and opinions on previous episodes. We appreciate that so much. We are gonna go through and we are gonna thank people that supported us live on Twitch. But first, Anthony, where can they find you? You can find me everywhere online at a Carboni, except mm -hmm. for on Twitch, where I'm at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you cowards, it's mine. Give it back to me. And also be sure to check out my podcast, We Have Concerns. It's my science comedy podcast that I do with Jeff Kanata. You can find that at wehaveconcerns.com. Our latest one is about which animals we're going to bring to the moon with us when we colonize. All right. NASA has decided. Oh. And we've got the list. Okay. So go check that out. Sage? Where are you when you, you can run find, away? Because sometimes yeah. you're not here. Yeah, when I'm not here, you can find me everywhere on the internet at Not Sage. I stream on my channel Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. And uh, here on this channel all the time, check out some of the other content. How about you, Alex? Yeah, um, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me- ah! Oh. Where did Alex go? It's, he's right there. Oh, thank God. You there can't you just go. let anybody sit at the controls to this thing, Alex. You gotta watch your post, man. Yeah, well, you can you can check check out my um, my D and D yeah. show, uh, Strange Hungers. Oh, <laughs> put the glasses back on. Put the glasses back on. <laughs>